Full disclaimer, you don't have to do this. This isn't Thomas telling you this is the only way. But if you look at how energy is created in the body when we're working out, this is a pretty surefire strategy to still be able to get really positive results with your workouts and potentially building muscle while doing a low carb or ketogenic diet. Hey, do you wanna make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so that you never, ever, ever miss a beat. And also, after this video, there's a special link down below to save you a couple bucks on chomp sticks. Chomps are the grass-fed, grass-finished, beef sticks, venison sticks, turkey sticks, super awesome stuff, big supporter of this channel, but who doesn't like getting a little price break? So check them out down below in the description after you watch this video. Okay, so to quickly understand uh, where I'm going out with this, we have to have a brief kind of embryonic understanding of uh, ATP and how energy is created in the body and how that kind of changes a little bit on keto. First off, sophomore biology, uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, that is the energy currency within your body. It is created by adding a phosphate molecule to something called ADP. Basically, energy is released when ATP loses a phosphate molecule. So ATP, adenosine triphosphate, three phosphate molecules, one phosphate molecule is ripped off, okay, chemically, and this creates a spark of energy that causes our muscles to contract. So this is happening thousands of times per second, right? Okay, now when we're on a ketogenic diet, we don't have as much anaerobic energy. Okay, so what that means is the type of fuel that we would normally use for lifting weights is going to be carbohydrates. Okay, it's normally going to fuel us through uh, you know, anaerobic glycolysis where we burn carbs for energy or glucose. Well, because we don't have carbs coming in, we start to lose a little bit of that anaerobic performance. So what you wanna do is you wanna gear your training towards utilizing what is called the creatine phosphate system. So what that means is you wanna start training quite a bit heavier if you can handle it. Do not injure yourself as a result of this. Okay, but here's how it works. Creatine is not just a supplement. Creatine is in your body. Okay, you store it in your muscles. You store it from the food that you eat. You can supplement with it, and I do generally recommend it, but it's coming from the food a lot of times. So what happens is to recreate or to make phosphate back connected to the ADP, to create ATP, we have multiple systems to do that one of which is creatine, okay, where creatine has stores of phosphate. It's called creatine phosphate. It takes the phosphate molecule and it plugs it into the ADP to create energy again. But there's one glaring problem with creatine phosphate. It only works for the first one to three, maybe four reps, depending on how conditioned you are. But if you are in ketosis, you are very likely to not see a decrease in your strength in the one to three repetition range. So my advice to you to be able to maintain mass, to be able to continue to grow, is to train at least one or two times per week in an ultra heavy but safe range, okay, so that you utilize that creatine phosphate system. And also with your interval training, your cardio, things like that, train in seven to 10 second sprints and then recover for a long period of time so that you have enough time to restore creatine. Okay, so creatine gives you quick, very quick bursts of energy, but then it takes between 30 seconds and two minutes to replenish again. So if you're training, utilizing the creatine phosphate system, you allow yourself to still be able to train heavy in spite of whatever diet you're doing, whether you're loaded up with carbs or whether you are completely devoid of carbohydrates, you still have your creatine phosphate system. And you can hack this a little bit by adding creatine as a supplement, okay? Very common muscle building supplement that you can take at a you know, two or three gram dose, okay? But if you tailor your training to leaning into the heavy workout a little bit more, you don't have to rely on that anaerobic energy system as much. So then what you do is you contrast that with high rep training on your off days. So then by the end of the week, you sort of net it out with the overall rep load on your muscles. So an example might be something like this. This isn't perfect, but just to give you an insight. Mondays and Thursdays, do your very heavy creatine style training where you're gonna train in that one to four repetition range with adequate recovery, and then do some cardio after the fact. And then your other days, maybe Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, something like that, train a little bit higher rep, full body, higher rep, maybe 20, 24 repetitions where you're not gonna see as much of an effect 
from not having glycogen. These little tips and tricks can completely be a game changer for you when it comes down to how your workouts are affected with the ketogenic diet. So anyhow, if you want me to do more content like this, make sure you put it down below in the comment section, and I'll see you tomorrow.